Hi everybody, um, so we wanted to talk about the Amazon jungle um, and look at a lot of details for this. Um, I wanted to start, um, I, first of all I want to re-explain, re uh, and I just can't explain enough how important the jungle is, so it's just beyond our imagination uh, in terms of importance this discussion so uh, we're looking at a lot of details again um, and I want to look at some alternatives as I took a walk down Main Street tonight I realized you know a lot of people are living close to the jungle or even in the jungle um, and there needs to be alternatives uh, to you know vacation in or even check out other areas outside the jungle that are better uh, perceptually so uh, I wanted to start with this map to kind of show uh, the other part of South America essentially Chile uh, Argentina and then even getting close here to Antarctica which you can see the tail of Antarctica there um, so if you're interested um, actually South America it gives you a first glimpse of Antarctica and many of the people that do try to travel to Antarctica leave from a uh, city called Urshurwe down here in Argentina um, and actually the coastline here is very nice uh, a lot of it is like California or even better I would say significantly better um, and the other opportunity um, for people is that living in Colombia uh, Peru Ecuador is actually the coast uh, west coast of Mexico uh, Baja California all this is actually way nicer than California and cheaper than California. I'm gonna turn off the climate map and I'm gonna turn off the earthquake map just so you can see uh, some of the details here. I'm sorry about this. Um, but actually what we're trying to do is solve the problems in the jungle, not necessarily by living in the jungle, um, but by first understanding them. So basically what I wanna emphasize is that, uh, oh, whoa, sorry about that. Um, that all of Central America is a whole opportunity. A lot of people are living right in here. So what we're gonna see tonight is that the problem is actually on the back side of the jungle primarily um, because that's where the wildlife is trying to hide. So essentially what's happened is that this mountain range has, is about 20,000 feet and it's been impossible to cross, but there's certain ways that people have found to get across that mountain range and into the jungle. So it's prevented the wildlife from going to this side of the ocean, um, but it's also uh, prevented the people from going there. But then there's been some, uh, as we're gonna see in a moment here, some problems um, and some of the biggest cities in South America are right along this mountain range as we're gonna see in terms of Venezuela as well so uh, let me just go through all the details really quickly again uh, to try to get everyone kind of understanding what's happening here so I'll try to start um, maybe with this map here even though it's not a very good map um, but it's pretty simple to understand so uh, essentially this is the Amazon so we're gonna basically look at overall what's going on in the Amazon the different regions of the Amazon kind of explore the alternatives like I was mentioning again man no matter what kind of conversation I was thinking about this is that if you're struggling for food right now think about the way the jungle works if you're a monkey you don't depend on crops, you don't depend on anything, you just depend on the natural environment feeding you. So that's a really awesome way to live because uh, your food is, per your water's there, your food's there, you're basically 100% dependent on the environment. There's no crops, there's no, I don't go to the grocery store, uh, I just drink the water, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a very simple and easy way to live and that's the way the jungle is. Um, and we got to keep it that way. So basically, that's awesome, right? So, and imagine if the whole entire world could be like that, where, uh, you know, your housing is good, your food is good, all that. So uh, that's essentially the jungle, right, for the wild animals. So you can see I put a perimeter here on this red line, and that's primarily the mountain range. And it actually splits here. I didn't quite show that. Let me 
show that but there's another split that goes off that way and then one that goes off that way towards caracas and there's even a third kind of heading that way so there's this mountain range here that's very important called the andes mountains and we're definitely going to try to discuss that as much as possible so uh this is a very complicated diagram but i'll explain all the details here essentially at the, the center of this discussion is manaus uh that's a brazilian city uh at the center of the jungle and it's a very mysterious city uh, they actually did some special trade regulations to give <laughs> they tried to get businesses uh, believe it or not to manaus get a load of this they made it tax free to land electronics here and then just immediately fly the airplane somewhere else and that way you didn't have to pay any taxes on your electronics so there was actually like a boom for electronics in the jungle at one point um a lot of that is moved to paraguay incidentally so brazilians believe it or not they they actually make a road trip all the way to paraguay um just to buy electronics and then bring it back to sao paulo um, because of the free trade zones so there's some crazy stuff like that but um i circled this point here that's a major intersection in the amazon river that we definitely want to look at and i kind of circled peru here being peru being a very important part of this whole discussion because actually peru owns the deepest part of the jungle here and actually they're causing some of the most significant problems maybe maybe colombia is probably the most significant problems uh, because they're actually doing deforestation, significant deforestation, <laughs> probably as much or more. And then Ecuador actually is a very interesting problem because uh, some of the most important uh, natural habitat is on this side of the mountain range. And Ecuador plants a lot of food and bananas, so there's a question on Ecuador. And actually, this is something that I didn't really explain enough, is this city right here this is a lightning lake this has all been farmed out it may be a complete accident that this was farmed it probably should have been right here in colombia in this portion here so when people first started moving up into bogota before they moved to bogota they probably lived along the coastline in cartega for instance and then moved further up into the hills uh and essentially moved to bogota right there which you can see so we're going to try to look at that as well so here is the main part of the amazon you can see how big manaus is and actually some of the deforestation is visible very easily here and you can kind of see how that has affected both the north side and south side and then kind of further into the river and some very important lakes uh that we definitely should know about and then there's even further part back into the jungle now here's the back end of the jungle so the front end of the amazon is here the east side this is the west side so the mountain range and you can kind of see uh what i was talking about before is these three uh sorry about this i'm trying to get this all on one map here uh, but basically these regions are extremely important because they involve multiple habitats different climates and so they are extremely important as well as this border region and it's certainly all the river systems which you can see in here and the complexity of that river and then here's kind of the columbia question a uh, bogota kind of pulling it right in there as well so we'll try to look at that um, and then this is that region right along here and you can see the complexity and we're not even going to touch the surface of the, the problem with the coral reefs uh, we're going to completely avoid that question um, and try to just figure out what to do about the amazon now you can see there's a whole section here uh, that's very important as well as down in here which is rio de janeiro uh, and some other questions that we're going to look at um, this is the map of the wildlife diversity we'll try to look at that carefully here is some other things related to a different discussion that we just had so i'll try to skip over this sorry about this uh and actually i missed the farming map i gotta do that for uh yep yeah, sorry about this um yeah so this is the population discussion um this is the north part and it's uh really a lot to be discussed here but um, basically, it kind of centers around the Manaus 
discussion. Um, but what I wanted to really say here is that we need to stay thinking about what we're doing here and kind of focus on this main chunk right in here in particular, right? Because that is where the population actually is flowing and it actually starts right here in Caracas, which I doubly circled here and actually even this island right here which is an english-speaking island uh trinidad and tobago another small island right there which i'll circle so this gets off into the caribbean and we can actually start to solve both the jungle problems and the biodiversity in terms of the water right here on this island so that becomes a very important topic in general and i didn't even circle this one and that's a very important discussion as well um, there's actually a tremendous amount of oil right in here venezuela has more oil than saudi arabia so there's a whole lot of money in venezuela <coughs> that can be used uh, to help solve some of these problems um, and let me i'm really sorry about this i'm trying to get uh these images here so uh yeah sorry about this okay so uh again this is the deforestation discussion so certainly i need to uh talk about this in great detail but you can see here that it doesn't manaus is actually a critical part here uh of the whole entire discussion i'm going to double circle it uh just to make that totally clear but this actually here this route here uh, it actually the deforestation problem probably starts on the south side of the Amazon and it actually starts right here with this city here and I didn't quite explain that enough but this is a major city in Brazil called Belém uh, everyone in Brazil is familiar with it um, but basically it's an Amazon jungle city um, it's definitely an alternative we should probably get people out of Manaus and get them over to Belém, but the problem is that the housing in Belém is getting to be all the trees are being deforested on the south side here of the Amazon. And if we look at the image of Earth, we can see that deforestation in here. Um, but actually, the more important part of the discussion is some of the most pristine parts of the Amazon are actually right in here. You can see that up in here, uh, there's definitely a need for it here, but actually it's very important because the rivers all kind of, the big rivers come down this side. So meaning the bigger rivers are actually on this side. So actually a lot of the wildlife would really depend on the south side because there's only this one branch here. And if you depend on a river for your water, that becomes very important. So the south side of the discussion is probably uh, much more important than we're making it out to be. So the deforestation is definitely a question there. Now, on the north side, you can see Venezuela has almost completely deforested what they're doing. And this is a big problem around Lake Maracibo. And I'm going to have to close out this discussion soon because my uh, because of some things here. So, uh, But basically, you can see here in Bogota, uh, what the big problem is and how that kind of pulls out. It's actually, they, they would say, okay, we're stopping the deforestation on this side, but it actually comes in through this side into Bogota. So you can see, and that's actually a cross-border dispute. So they say, oh, it's Ecuador's problem, but then they're coming in and pulling in the wood from Ecuador, for instance, and so they blame the other country. And the same thing for Venezuela, and they kind of are starting to do that kind of thing. And then even here, Venezuela is probably pulling a lot of it from this city right here. So uh, that is kind of the question. And then on the south side, certainly Peru is definitely a big question here. And we're going to see on a map kind of more proof of why Peru is such a big question on this. So you can see that Lima is kind of an oceanfront city. It's very dry there. Um, but they go out into the hills here, and then they even cross Peru in, into this city here and out to here. Um, and you can see it's a combination of problems. So Brazil probably blames Peru, and Peru probably blames uh, them. But uh, now here's the soil map, and this one I definitely did not do enough on. I was just trying to get this 
uh, published as quick as possible so that we can all discuss this in detail. But basically, there's so many soil regions to look at here, um, and I wanted to emphasize this whole coastline. If you look on the map here, this is actually pristine jungle along this side here, and there's some nice uh, little rivers uh, that can be used to help solve the problem on the south side so it, it's, it's probably what could happen is that if Macapa starts to become if these start to become major cities uh, it basically starts to look just like this on the north side um, so that would be a major problem to consider um, so that and then here we have Belim and these other cities you can see that that kind of translates here and all these other cities are actually also flood flood zones and definitely responsible and can help work on the amazon um, i wanted to show uh yeah so this is looking at the basin map so i wanted to re-emphasize that countries the water basins are probably very important to look at as preserving as wildlife habitats and natural forests a lot of the river system uh, stops or starts right along these water basin areas so you can kind of say this is where the country border is but also where the water border is and there's a very important biohabitat regions um, now here you can see the central piece that we first started the discussion um, and again if you're watching this and you need some help um, one of the reasons we're looking at this is to really clearly define the conflict with the wildlife, right? So if we're having lots of problems with our food, we need to see how we can help every all the life on our planet. Um, here is all the river maps. We can look in great detail about each river. And here I kind of went through and looked at every single river and kind of the inroads to how that all these little biohabitats so there's a biohabitat here 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 and then it becomes extremely critical on some of these green points because you can see right here on the mountain range you might have multiple species coming down from the mountains into the jungle and then these other pathways um, here and you can see this one splits again here on that river so there's all these little areas um, that may have different species and different types of wildlife so uh, that you can see uh, pretty good here so here's kind of the three main regions that you can see so there's kind of a pathway going out here this is the there's actually a pathway coming through here which is the actual river system but you can see that the climatology goes that way through here there's kind of a pathway down the center and then a side pathway there um, this lighting diagram really got me thinking carefully about the importance and the problem with Brasilia and how Brasilia really when they moved the capital out towards the jungle it started to create this whole chain reaction of events where Brasilia is starting to actually even they basically moved closer to the jungle right so the capital originally was in Rio de Janeiro down south down in here and then they moved it here which is a terrible decision but that was primarily from a farming perspective they probably should have moved anyway so you can see that this electricity basically all starts through uh brasilia and actually what i was thinking is they should maybe make brasilia not use any uh, nuclear power and just have it be a dark city for instance right and especially this city becomes kind of the focal point once you get to this point it starts to be pretty obvious that that's where the electric pump is going now uh, there's other points here you can see this is Bogota another city that kind of came out into the jungle and then another couple areas and then here's Lima you can see definitely a sign that they have caused the problem there and there's more evidence here seeing Lima you can kind of see that that was part of it and then this whole mountain range this is the Bolivian problem you can see Bolivians they kind of go off this way and then come back into Brazil out this side and then actually go into the worst part of the jungle and become the most significant part 
of the problem in Brazil. So, are you, so here you can see how significant the electrical grid is in Peru, um, and that basically Peru probably needs to take responsibility because they're uh, putting electricity into the jungle, into this deep part of the jungle. Same with Ecuador and even Colombia, definitely, because you can see this. But you see that little portion here. Peru has basically gotten both sides of the mountain range, and once you get to the other side of the mountain range, that's becoming jungle. Uh, definitely so here is all the airports and you can see all the airports essentially are in this region uh, which is Bogota um, and that's where people fly into the jungle and then basically that's that so on the fire side you definitely see Peru here coming into the factor right and you can see it's actually not only just Peru but there's probably a gateway through here and then Colombia you can see that they basically come down through here and then Ecuador basically starting to pull in a lot of this uh, fire situation so you can actually start to see uh, that and the brazilians kind of stop at this point but then that becomes peru so this is peru primarily their responsibility on that okay so before we go completely upset about everything uh, we need to look at the alternatives right so to living in the, directly in the jungle yes we can fly in there and there's other ways to visit the jungle but that may not be completely wise so uh, there's definitely this part down in uh, Chile which is a whole new unexplored area um, for a lot of people in South America to recheck out this is very beautiful coastline uh, down here with very high mountains and some cool stuff a lot of people have moved out to Lima, um, and then there's a little city right in here. But then also there's all of Central America with some of the same and even better coastline. Uh, then you don't even have coastline right here in Bogota. Might as well just move up along the coast, pay the same amount, get they have the same life and even better life and even safer life because Bogota and Colombia is actually known for a lot of problems. So. Part of that is because of the proximity to the jungle. So basically, Panama is extremely expensive, but there's actually better places to live outside of just Panama, right along the coast here, all along this coast, and even up into Mexico. And the ironic thing is a lot of Mexicans are trying to come to California, and honestly, this is nicer than California and maybe half the cost. So basically, it's idiotic. <laughs> there's It's better to live down in here than it is in California. So, uh, and there's certainly a lot of farmland along here um, as well um, that we depend on in the United States uh, for Mexico as well as right here. So there's farming options definitely in Central America and we don't need to necessarily farm right in here. <laughs> we definitely should not be doing that. So there's definitely some other opportunities even to import. So for example, Mexico, you might send your food from this part of Mexico or right in here in Mexico or this part all the way to Chicago or New York or even to where I am in, in Idaho and that could be 3,000 miles so uh, and it is maybe even easier to ship it down through here or along this coast down into Colombia so this part of the farmland may be more acceptable and that's basically where the traditional part of farming but there's actually a lot of swamp here because of the drainage as well so it makes it difficult to farm so what happened is they've been farming here which is actually maybe not acceptable so um, and then venezuela has all this portion here so uh anyway so that's basically some ideas about this so i'm gonna try to not talk about this too much more um but I really wanted to try to talk with some other people about their ideas about what's going on. So uh, I'm gonna go through this one last time uh, because there's so much information here uh, and we're gonna try to look at it all. So just to make sure I haven't missed anything uh, because it's such an important topic. So, uh, so let me just take a moment here to, to re-emphasize some things. Um, so again, why are we looking at this? Um, why would you be interested in this at all? So, um, you know, basically this is about life on earth, right? And uh, this is the, like the jungle. This is two thirds. The, the, the Congo jungle is about one third of everything, maybe one fourth. This is almost everything in terms of the wildlife on our planet. 
at least in on the land, right? Um, and certainly, uh, you know, the, this is this is the key here. So, and um, we have to do this 100% correct. So. Uh, that's why I'm trying to look at this so carefully and certainly we have a lot more work This is just the start of it um, in terms of understanding. So uh, Basically, I wanted to relook at this city really make sure that you understand the importance of this city right here For solving the problem. So you don't necessarily you might have a nicer time Understanding the jungle right here in Balim than you will in Manaus. It could be actually very dangerous here um, and much safer in Balim uh, to work on the problem. And this river here uh, can give you a definite taste of what's going on in the jungle. So uh, there are some alternatives uh, like that. And on the other side of this, um, basically you have Lima and some other areas, um, but Peru is actually causing quite a bit of the problem as well as Colombia and Ecuador, right? And even Bolivia we noticed here. So you can see actually a big part of the deforestation coming in through this side so um and bolivia maybe needs to help with that and a lot of the problem is doing the farming down here in paraguay and i looked at earth's most critical farmland um, and actually that was primarily down here in paraguay uh there probably should be farming right in this region here more so um so there is some alternatives to work on um so uh, here's the main river systems, and I kind of circled, highlighted some of these junctions. These junctions become extremely important um, to look at, as well as this whole backside. So this backside of the Amazon is really what we want to protect most. And the ironic thing is we've put electrical lines in Peru over to the other side of the mountain. So now, basically, it's just a matter of time. This was the most protected area. If you think about it, there was a mountain range here. People sailed up and down the coast. Lima became a major city, but they never really crossed it until like places like Machu Picchu uh, started to be created. So Machu Picchu was on one side of the mountain range and basically the doorway to the jungle. And if you know anything about the history of Che Guevara, Che Guevara almost died in Machu Picchu. He went to Machu Picchu, got very sick, and almost died. That's a warning sign to say, hey, stay out of the jungle. I don't think that's part of Che Guevara's history, but it definitely, when I read about Che, I was like, man, duh, you shouldn't be going to the jungle. That was your lesson from Machu Picchu. So in Lima, uh, Che Guevara learned a very tough lesson, and Peruvians uh, maybe need to explain that to the world, that they, they control a lot of the deepest part of the jungle, and that's uh, their role is to actually protect the jungle. So... Uh, but there's a junction right here which starts to be part of the Bolivian section. All this drainage from the Bolivian mountains hits into the jungle here, and, and definitely Bolivia can take responsibility for this. This is kind of the Manaus area, which we're heading into. These two junctions just up here are extremely important, and I wanted to circle the whole front end of the Amazon very clearly to make it clear that this drainage area is very important and then these three sections now this section is unbelievably important because it's pristine jungle so what has happened essentially is this whole area has been filled with people we have bogota colombia the capital of colombia and if they start going to the other side of the mountain range here that could be a complete disaster so uh Anyway, so that is that. Um, again, you can kind of see I pointed here uh, these exits, and this exits are all critical to monitor in terms of what is going on there. So um, here I think I circled Galapagos Island. This is definitely a no-go situation. This is a island, perhaps one of the, if you look at the plank, photoplankton, so a lot of the photoplankton is coming right out of here, Galapagos Island. So there's a lot of fish and wildlife uh, habitat that's never been uh, human. Humans have never really messed with. So that's very important. And it actually is connected right over to here, to this section here, um, which we need to watch very carefully. And actually, Colombia is a big part of everything here in terms of that split between this way, because there's this mountain range that heads off this way, and this way and this way so basically Colombia becomes a huge part of that here's that zoom in again of the center part of the Amazon and again I can't explain this enough um, that you know these 
areas we're kind of looking at pictures that maybe we shouldn't even be looking at um, because this areas we probably should never even visit whatsoever I'm gonna circle uh, this doubly here to make it very obvious this is now so essentially this city kind of started everything um, and it's uh, as you can see I pointed out some specific problems they're actually starting to fill up this side of the river that side of the river and it's all actually starting to fill in there um, so some more details um, to look at here and again definitely look at these in the rain maps I think I didn't really show those I'm gonna go through this extra fast because I want to get to the rain maps as well but you can see I definitely made it look a lot more complicated up here because it's for sure is and that the question is that it doesn't necessarily get simpler it actually gets more complicated because you're talking about water here and right here we have uh, two countries we have Haiti and Dominican Republic being a centerpiece of this whole entire puzzle and, uh, and also Puerto Rico right next to it um, so that becomes super important to look at um, this is some uh, other pictures which we discussed just a moment ago so uh, sorry about this yeah so uh, and again this is the population questions and I'm just trying to think of anything else so basically we're trying to talk about how Panama and Mendelin in particular, which I didn't really mention. So what happens here is that this city, Cali, actually becomes important because it's a two-way split. It's a it's like a three-way split here between these three regions. So you can head off to Bogota or Mendelin. The Mendelin route actually turns out to be safer um, because it heads up to Central America, which is much more appropriate for living in as opposed to even living on the island. So the problem is as you head out this way, you start to get into the Caribbean and you hit that question of the Trinidad and Tobago. So that's the whole question right here. So Colombia, Bogota is just a centerpiece of everything here. And it's just... It's, it was really a jungle, it, it, I'm gonna triple circle it. So basically, man, that became hugely important um, because it was basically the, dope, the back door to the jungle here. So um, yeah, and uh, again, here's the front door of the jungle kind of looking up the river on the end of the Amazon. So here's the end of the Amazon and then that city Belim. So basically, <laughs> If your life is terrible in Manaus because of mosquitoes and insects, get out of there. Go to Belim. Check out something else. And you can see that this is definitely a problem here. This city right down there, um, which should probably be discussed in detail. And again, the north side, this is where most of the people live, which is actually the back door of the Amazon. And it basically started here at point number one, right? We, A lot of the native indigenous Americans went into Colombia and basically started farming right here in Cartega and then went up into the mountains um, and then basically Mendelin and then Bogota and then even went further down the mountain range. The nice part about living in the mountains is that the temperature was great, right? It wasn't super hot, 70 degrees up in the mountains. So, And then you can see basically colonies, basically a lot of people started living in Maracibo and then even Caracas being an awesome alternative to Bogota. So why live in Bogota when you can live in Caracas? You don't have to live anywhere near the jungle. You can live really close to the beach. You know, this is only a few miles from the beach. Um, problem is that the temperature gets to be really hot as you get lower in elevation, but there's still some mountain range right there in Caracas, which is why Caracas is so popular to live in. And again, Lima was right on the coast here. A lot of people moved out of Lima up in the mountains, and now you can see the Peruvian problem as well as this Bolivian problem being even extreme down in Bolivia so a lot of people in Bolivia pride themselves on being very indigenous but the problem is it's actually there's some significant problems there now the soil maps I didn't quite explain this enough and I'd like to redo these maps a little bit better um, but basically these soil region these three regions right in here are very important because of the climate um, 
and again here is another map here and this map actually was probably one of the most important maps that i did it's one of the maps we probably shouldn't uh use for traveling but it's super important because it basically explains to us every single little area inlet about how this all becomes super important uh to travel for the animals so this is like the pathways that the animals might take and then this is the pathway through here and then kind of following this main river but on the south side here so actually the south side is super important uh, on that and then these spots here uh being important for biodiversity and then the electric lines definitely these spots here look to be a very big concern and actually lima being the center concern for the electric problem in the jungle and probably balancing that with this city right here would be the right decision to figure out why maybe not even talk to them but you might have to talk to uh, brasilia to correct the problem there so uh, and then you can see the population also being very significant through these cities here because they come out through here and then they try to farm and it eventually gets right back into the jungle again and here definitely clear that peru is responsible for the electricity problem as well as ecuador and especially colombia here and venezuela going extremely deep into the jungle there and then the flight path and this is very interesting again to look at because it shows the uh main uh, fire map and i can can't explain enough how important it is to even start thinking about the problem back out into this area um and you can see definitely venezuela up there being significant so uh yeah so i i don't know who else watching or wants to talk about this and i hope uh we can really think about this now one interesting comment that i'd make to some friends living in the middle east and other areas is that one interesting thing is that a lot of people called indians live in india uh and even the middle east and you may find that you actually look like a lot of the people living in this area actually look like they're south americans uh in a lot of ways and the interesting idea here is that there's actually no food in the middle east um and a lot of that food is probably so when you're thinking about getting food or even living somewhere else uh because life is difficult um it may be wise you know something like 30 percent or even 50 percent of the food comes from indonesia uh, because they can't get it from uh, india uh, into pakistan for instance um, or even uh, here you can see northern iran having some food and then turkey and certainly that question that we discussed about russia having all this farmland here being taken off the map because of a war so uh, and remember this small little sliver of land here is 10 percent of all provides 10 percent of all the food to all of africa that little spot right there so that little spot can be extremely important um now this whole area is farmed out completely and it's complete there's no farmland left in india or anywhere so what happens is that you need to think about where to live or where to help out with now africa is an obvious great spot um and actually may be nicer in the long term because of diversity there it's nice to have all kinds of people there um but the interesting alternative is actually central america right so if all these guys are probably farming in the wrong place because of the jungle central america becomes a very interesting place to live uh for people in the middle east especially that are struggling with actually no food no water nothing right so basically you know these areas are already under conflict because of direct exposure to the jungle um and even down here in chile there's an interesting option as well close to antarctica they speak spanish and they actually look very similar to the people in the middle east so uh there is some interesting questions um to help out now what happened in africa is that the people <laughs> in indians indians and pakistanis and middle easterners moved into egypt went up the river and lived here they made so much money in uganda that in the 1970s they 
they gave them 24 hours to leave. Every Indian had to leave East Africa and go back to their own country. They kicked everyone out um, because they made so much money in Africa. That could be a very similar situation in Central America or even uh, along the coast here. But so it, it's really, you know, it's really kind of a weird problem, uh, you know, living anywhere nowadays. So, uh, and certainly, um, the biggest problems on earth uh in terms of food are probably in the desert in terms of people that are living in the desert right in this region as well as <laughs> some areas in east africa so there is a lot of significant problems of food especially in sudan right now and even in ethiopia and all along the coast here you know they basically have no farmland and you know uh maybe 500 million people so uh there's quite a big question here so and what happened in japan is that they overfished so they they had to fish believe it or not in the 1990s there was laws where they were fishing they had so many fishing boats on the other side of the ocean they were fishing off the coast here from japan right and so japan basically sailed all took their boats all the way across the ocean so even the fishing question is be cutting out of control so uh, that's definitely a debate so as people look at what they're doing uh, here and Russia actually provides a lot of food you can see all the farmland there's very few people living up here because it's too cold but there is a lot of farmland right in here especially so uh, that's a whole question so uh, and also the other thing to think about is that there is some opportunities um, I don't want to talk about all the details but a lot of the farms are actually covered in the United States. Most of the food is actually produced uh, under a greenhouse and actually kind of like systematically farmed. Um, so they, uh, there's a lot of food like that. So basically, as, as people look at that. So, uh, but anyway, so our primary discussion was with the wildlife here and trying to stay out of the jungle. So. Um, you know, and Brazil definitely there is some opportunities down here in Argentina for farming. Like I was saying, is that Paraguay? You can see a big spot here of people, but um, there is a lot of farmland still remaining right in here, um, and that certainly should be farmed way before this stuff is farmed. So there's definitely some opportunities, and this is almost completely farmed out in here. So, as well as in Brazil, so it's just a concern in general. So. Uh, anyway, I hope this has helped you think about some ideas and uh, certainly um, take a look at the details about things. Um, and I really haven't discussed Central America in great detail. Um, let me show you one last map. So I, I think I forgot to actually look at this map very carefully with everybody. This is the global farming map. Um, so you can kind of see, we're going to look at this clearly this does not explain the whole picture but you can see india and pakistan almost completely farmed out all of europe completely farmed out and china is almost completely farmed out as well because this is all desert remember this is all desert here too <laughs> so basically that leaves south america and africa as the only opportunity so if you're really starving for food in the middle east or some other area it basically leaves west africa east africa and south america or central america right here and um, so there's not a whole lot of opportunity but uh and we absolutely have to leave the jungle here and this jungle here as we've been looking at right so it uh and it's certainly a lot worse than this picture makes it out to be um, because there's so much land that cannot be farmed uh, either because it's too cold in the far north or the far end we certainly can't really farm on antarctica but uh and how do we balance this with the wildlife so i want to close this out as quickly as possible because this conversation should be about the wildlife right so again um here's the question right we have conflict on our planet our lives may be absolutely terrible from time to time and the question is why is it terrible because maybe we're not getting along with all the animals 
in the universe, right, uh, are on the planet. And because it's not just our planet, like, we can't just look at this map and say, oh, this is all human farmland. So we need to really reconsider that whole approach. And that's what we're trying to do. And the opportunity is to actually rethink. Remember that small little piece of land in Egypt was providing 10% of the food for 1.2 billion people. So it is possible to do a lot of good farming. A friend of mine called me up and he was like screaming at me. He was like, we can do like <laughs> new types of farming. We're gonna figure some things out. And I was like, man, you're totally right. We're gonna try to figure this problem out. But honestly, there's some serious problems that we need to take seriously as well. So you can see here in Central America, there's actually a whole lot of not able to farm land area up in the mountains here. but. And some of this area, the Yucatan Peninsula, is going to be extraordinary farmland, but it's very difficult because there needs to be an agreement with the jungle people that, well, okay, if we're going to farm here and take all this habitat as forest, this definitely better not be farmed. And that agreement probably needs to be done with Colombia and Peru, especially uh, here. So, and it may be not even done with uh, Brazil. Uh, so because Brazil has plenty of farmland so uh, but Mexico uh, if you go to the grocery store you'll see that 90% of our food uh, in the produce section in the winter time or even during the regular time of the year will come from this part of Mexico or even um, there's a lot of farmland believe it or not in here um, and actually California this valley here you'll, if you go to the grocery store believe it or not this valley right here uh, there's been sections that have turned completely to dust in south part here. Remember, it gets a lot hotter as you get near the equator. Look at how light that, that's not very green in this map at all, right? And this is where so much of the food in the United States comes from. And you can compare that to, uh, let's just go over here to Pakistan. You can see that this is essentially like California. And, you know, it's just an amazing amount of food that can come from even this little section right here, right? This section here produces 10%, but you need 10 times this to produce all the food for Africa. And that's basically the importance of West Africa and Nigeria. And a lot of the farms, let me see if I can go back. So you can see here, a lot of that farming is done in Nigeria actually, and even in here, but again, uh, and then look at all the farm down in Argentina as well as in the United States. Now the problem is, is that something like, in some places, 90% or 50% of the crops are used for uh, fuel for cars because there's so much corn or to feed other animals. So it's not vegetarians here. And there's other maps that I would like to show, but basically, um, yeah, so, uh, Anyway, I hope we have really discussed this clearly to understand everything um, and uh, given a good perspective of what's been going on. So uh, I'm just trying to think of any last question. So yeah, I just really wanted to thank you personally uh, to try to see what we can do to look at the problem here um, and really start to understand how we can make this happen. Um, you know, and be uh, work together on the planet. And there's a lot of questions that I've avoided, uh, including the oceanography stuff. Um, you know, we talked about Japan a little bit, um, but again, these areas are becoming very populated, um, and the ocean is being overfished as well. So, the answer is to probably stick to the land and focus on farming that correctly. So, uh, certainly, Central America is a huge solution and the Yucatan Peninsula and Mexico probably has the entire solution to, even though it's so far away from the Amazon jungle it can definitely negotiate uh, and even here in Nicaragua and some other areas uh, can negotiate to try to get food and other things so that we don't have to uh, especially on this you know solving the problem of Peru a lot of this in Ecuador is bananas um, but particularly Colombia and Venezuela um, also. And Venezuela actually gets into the Caribbean here and then Trinidad and Tobago. And we didn't even discuss this because the problem is even more serious and more significant um, because of the ocean. So 
uh, and I wanted to avoid that question for right now just to look at the actual solution first. So, um, and uh, in the United States, certainly Florida is an option to understand uh, some of the, let me change this to the uh, climate map so you can see some detail here about Florida. Sorry, this is taking a little bit while to load. I'm really sorry about this. So you can see that actually Florida has a little piece of it, uh, and that's Miami essentially that can tell us what the jungle's like. So we can, there's a lot of sugarcane farming. Uh, you can't really see it here. I don't have the maps, but um, I, if I loaded up the detailed farming maps, which they have on the US agriculture, there's a lot of sugarcane uh, as well as down in here. Um, in this green region, um, but actually we can start to figure out how to solve some of these jungle farming problems. Like we got to solve them right here in the United States as well in Florida. So that can help us if we do the farming correctly here with the natural habitat. <laughs> What's going on is it's basically becoming roadkill, right? Um, the animals are, you know, I mean, it's like urban. If you've been to Miami, it's a city. There's no animals anywhere. So, uh, but actually there was a lot of animals there at one point. So you can see that definitely the habitat gets even more significantly important. And you can see the variety of habitat here uh, in uh, Haiti and Dominican Republic. So, but basically this whole coastline is kind of the answer. So uh, to get out of this whole question of where the problem is. so. Mexico definitely being a key here. So, uh, yeah, so I'm really sorry. I hope, I hope I've explained this uh, in detail so that we can get to a better place to live and uh, work with the wildlife. It's so awesome having so many different animals and plants and all that. And I live in a very terrible place of the world. Look at how dry it is where I live right up here. So, um, but... Uh, it's, you know, basically it's really important to try to get, um, I'm happy to even see one little tiny bird on my street, you know, when I see this bird, I try to talk to it and things like that. But man, can you imagine, another thing I was thinking about is it would be so cool to have 1,209 pets in your backyard, right? That's an awesome way to live. But man, if you're living like that, we need to be cautious. So we really got to rethink about that. And that's really, um... All that can happen even in Florida here um, if, you, if we wanted to, right? Uh, we could really think about that um, because there's actually a big part of uh, this Ever Florida Everglades is very important uh, habitat there as well as uh, some areas in Louisiana. Um, and then Puerto Rico is also kind of part of the United States and that's very vital as well. So, uh, but uh, certainly Mexico uh, and some other areas. So anyway, I want to try to close this up. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if you have some very significant problems, let me know. I'd really be interested in what the problem is. Um, we went through the entire Congo jungle discussion. Uh, I have some friends all over Africa now, and it's been really fun uh, to get to know people. You know, I have a, a friend that calls me up, and then he kind of spawned this whole conversation. He's just a young guy, and called me up, and he's like, man, I really need some help, and all of a sudden, this turned into a gigantic discussion of everything going on in the Congo, and he just lives over here or something. I think he said he lived in Uganda now, but he changed where he lived. So, but Uganda is a huge part of this. I have some friends in Uganda, and it's a huge part, because it's like really the doorway, this back door into the jungle, and you know, they're just like really, you know, it's, it's really terrible what happened. There was a major war up here in Sudan and the parents all died and the kids are actually down in Uganda. There's like hundreds of orphanages of just kids without parents that have either abandoned, or I don't know, it's really weird. So they basically went up the, uh, you know, they, they've been migrating. Essentially what they've been trying to do is go across the entire jungle over here to West Africa. So there's like a whole migration of hurting people that like to go up and down this is a really fun trip to do but you know you can die you know they basically go all the way up the the uh, nile river and you end up in uganda and basically by that time some people have died so but there's a whole trip heading down here uh, there's a migration path for humans but also for wildlife so 
uh, but it's been really interesting to try to help out and then I just want to mention something else you know I have some friends also that I made out here um, in India and uh, in some other areas in the Middle East and there's been even more problems there's an unbelievable amount of problems so uh, and, and just thinking about how that's related to food in Thailand in India and Punjab area so and then just looking at you can see this fault line here kind of coming into here so it's kind of an interesting question about the unbelievable thing is Africa is poorer than this area and yet Africa is probably going to solve the problem where is Europe going to get their food in the winter time right if you live up here in the winter time you have to get your food from somewhere okay you can get it from Europe well Europe already needs food they're actually going to probably get their food from West Africa so, and the interesting thing is that that's what we do in the United States we get our food from Mexico in the winter uh, just like Europe does so and, and actually Africa even though it's so poor is going to provide the solution for food for many Europeans and many Europeans probably should just travel and help out in West Africa and there's a, definitely a question of not going into the jungle um, you know there's a really tempting thing to maybe go into the jungle but why not if you're here a young European go to West Africa work there on a farm or even in uh, northern Africa there's some green lists here um, but basically Africa has the solution so the solutions the ironic thing the, the terrible thing is that the solutions to most of these problems in food are coming near and near, closer and closer to the jungle right so basically Europe needs food well it's coming from Africa guess where that's close to the jungle okay so they need food they're, they're kind of going closer and closer to the jungle here so the question is how to use the correct land for food um, and for the right types of reasons so uh, and basically being cautious to preserve these areas so uh, and I'm not even going to show the map the final map here but I hope that kind of explains some of the details um, and I'm really sorry about the length of this discussion I wanted to try to uh, go after this topic as quickly as possible and the other question is on war right like so and I wanted to really put Africa in the spotlight on this is that Africa if we really take this back if we take war back to the jungle Africa and actually Brazil and Colombia need to take responsibility you know even though the war is happening up here like we got to solve the problem right here like if we don't solve it here if it all goes back to food like clearly this is a food question in my mind we got to think about the jungle prioritize that extremely important like we're never going to live happily wherever you're living you know india has completely populated this whole entire area there's no nothing less for for any animals maybe just tiny sliver down here and even that is not really true so basically it becomes a wildlife question and so we have to look at that very carefully and i just can't emphasize that enough um you know so as we study like the congo war like we basically had and i had this debate with my brother and i'm not going to talk about the details but uh and the other thing to think about before we close this question because i started on the north pole and the south pole we have this unbelievable thing called the the universe right and basically at some point we're going to need to go to another planet but we may need to start thinking about the north pole and the south pole and there are people that live down here on the tail of uh the you know and also other area research bases around antarctica but uh and they even study the cosmic microwave background they have a radio telescope right here it studies the cosmic microwave background but one interesting thing to think about is that uh if the language if we really don't understand what's going on on our planet it may be that that india may have a big key this kind of triangle or shape here they may have a big key on the language of the north pole and the arabic may have a big key to the south pole because they have a little line underneath their language but uh, the interesting thing to think about is that farming if most farming is done indoors a lot of it anyway and uh, maybe there is a rethink about the north pole entirely you can see a same triangular shape here um you see this little thing here that's kind of the same shape as india now um that's something very interesting to think about i'll probably try to talk about that at some point but there are alternatives to even living 
here, right? You can, there's other places. Some of the best, they do competitions for farming uh, vegetables. And some of the winners have been actually up in Alaska for the world records for many of the vegetables. So that's actually quite far north, uh, which is unbelievable. So uh, there is some interesting things like that. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to close this out. I hope I haven't closed the door. I've actually opened the door to some new ideas. And certainly we're not even talking yet about farming on the North Pole or the South Pole, right? So there's a whole separate discussion on that and living in very unusual areas. Like people at one point, and I'll get into the last piece of discussion. I'm probably going to get into a lot of trouble here discussing this. But anyway, there's, there's definitely some interesting places to farm. So... Uh, and basically, you know, you have Tibet, some area here in China, um, up here, which is basically the highest, some of the highest mountains in the world. There's Mount Everest, and then K2 over on this side. But uh, you know, there's some very interesting questions about uh, spiritual ideas as well. So uh, anyway, so hopefully this is um, giving you an interesting introduction to everything uh, for both the. Uh, Amazon as well as my other discussion on the Congo um, and I'm really sorry that I have not discussed uh, more with all the spiritual aspects of things um, but certainly that is a big topic as well so I would like to re-emphasize uh, the other discussion on how to think about the entire Milky Way and its connection to our earth as well as our solar system uh, the discussion I had on that which is uh, basically about the equator um, and how this conversation got started so and basically rethinking about how the south pole essentially looks like a brain here you can see it's kind of sideways but uh, you know it's upside down this might be the spinal cord the uh, frontal frontal cortex and some other things and even if this melts what the significance of that is and how that may be related to other planets and other things going on around the solar system as well. So there's a huge lot of topics that we're not even discussing. Anyway, I am going to get going here, um, but I hope it's been interesting and I hope it will solve as many of your problems as possible thinking about the entire universe as well as our planet. So, and I just wanted to encourage people to definitely look at the planet Earth first and there's so many details uh that uh we need to look at um and i've hopefully talked about some hilarious ones in text because i can't quite say them on video because they are so hilariously funny spiritually in terms of the direction that those conversations would go and i'm kind of embarrassed because they're unbelievably awesome ideas i just didn't want to talk about it on camera because it's so funny um but uh because they're just so awesome like, that basically people should try to pick up their own ideas. So, um, but yeah, and, and, but this is the jungle and, uh, really, really it gives us a jungle of the universe spiritually, right? Like when we really start to understand this correctly, we're understanding the wildest ideas of the entire universe. And that really has to go back to the whole discussion on mathematics of why I would even discuss this because honestly the mathematics does not matter if we really have some great ideas um, about the jungle we're going to come across some really cool things that would make sense both logically and spiritually so that's why we're studying these ideas like the jungle so um, because we want to see how life works everywhere around the universe and Certainly the astrophysics is all going to tie back to the details here of the geology. And I think you saw some images that I kind of ran through uh, and I kind of did not discuss on camera because honestly it's up to other, I wanted to have a variety of people. I don't like my ideas per se. I like to hear new ideas wherever you are. And like I said, I've been talking with some people. I haven't really talked with enough people. I have a lot of friends in Rio de Janeiro, some that have grown up in Rio and they have monkeys there. I visited for about a year down there, a little bit less, and um, and it was really awesome. But uh, anyway, so, uh, but there's a whole coast here. Um, honestly, one of the funny things about Brazil is it's very flat. 
the whole country's flat except for like Rio down here. So, uh, but there's a lot of really beautiful coastline along this side of the coast here. So there's always alternatives no matter where you live. But um, anyway, so going back to the final discussion here is that what's your idea? Let's hear about it. Like, I'd be really interested. I, I hate my ideas. I would love to hear your ideas. Uh, even your problems become awesome solutions. So I'm always shocked. Like I'm about to hang up on people and then five, 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh my God, this is the best person I've ever met. Like they have the coolest idea, even though it seemed like nothing related to what I was trying to solve. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope it's helped you out. Think about some things, uh, whether it's the Amazon or the Congo. And there's kind of a piece of the puzzle here coming together. And that's what we've been looking for and uh you can see there's all these details here and this would actually be related quite a lot to the astrophysics and i'll just load oh geez sorry about that i'm gonna load the ooh, earthquakes i think it is oh, sorry about that oh, this is the there's so much data here i'm not even gonna load it so i think i've loaded it before but uh or let's try to do it one last time here so uh i'm gonna load a few hundred thousand earthquakes here um, and try to zoom in so you can see the last bit of the jungle and how beautiful amazingly it is so uh so like wow like look at all these earthquakes that have come in through here this is not what we see in the congo at all so there's a whole different side of activity underneath the earth and the weird thing about this this atlantic fault line you can see kind of getting into the astrophysics here is that this fault line that runs down the Atlantic splits it, right? And you can see there's all these earthquakes down here. There's actually more earthquakes right there than there is all in Africa. But at one time in the history of Africa, all this was created probably by earthquakes. You see as I zoom in here, a lot of those earthquakes are right here in East Africa and heading out. So uh, it's definitely different, but I don't want to like worry you necessarily because of the lightning maps, right? So there's a lot of lightning. There's all kinds of things to look at, right? Here's the lightning map and you can see definitely different uh, on that. But I need to get going because I don't want people to even consider my ideas helpful. I would like to hear your ideas. So hopefully, um, you can think about everything. I'll do a quick little rundown here again. Um, but uh, for people that don't have access, I'll try to do the whole thing. It's going to be really slow here. But you can see here in Central America quite a lot of earthquake activities. And this can be very dangerous to even build a house. It's worse than even in California. As you can see, this is about 50 years of data, maybe 30 you can see a major earthquake right there, and then you can see heading off into the ring of fire. And really, let's look at this from two perspectives, just because I haven't really seen this. And I have loaded in the fault lines too here. Now you can see this heads out into Russia. And the interesting thing is, man, this goes right to Beijing as well. So there's a fault line you can't really see, but this Lake Bacall, and you can see that's all heading out into the Himalayas. But look at this here, what goes on, right? You can see the split right here and heading out into this, which is the other side of the planet. And this right here gets into Australia. And I'm, I'm really sorry if this is slow, but I'm flipping the entire image hopefully to help you see this so now you can see the other side of it now this is all this has been entirely populated this island is mostly uninhabited but actually that's not true they're, they're going to move the capital from jakarta over to here somewhere so that's going to entirely populate this island which maybe they should move everyone off this island onto here and then repopulate this with wildlife whole separate question now you can see one thing i wanted to emphasize is you don't necessarily have to go directly into the earthquakes but you can go on the edges of these points and then here you can see up on this side taiwan this is taiwan right here and japan and you have that big earthquake that happened recently right in japan 
So that can be very dangerous. It's crazy earthquakes. So, uh, and then here we're going to go all the way down to the South Pole. And you can see not too many earthquakes, but at one point there probably was a tremendous amount. So, uh, and then lastly, let's close on, uh, I'll try to bring this back to Africa. Sorry about the slowness of this. Just so I realize there's some people that really do not have even a computer. So I want to try to let them see everything here. Uh, and you can see kind of pulling off into here in the north part of India. And then heading around here. And this is a very interesting fault line because it splits right here in the Indian Ocean. And I can't really zoom out too much. But it splits and it comes right out here. And this right here is a very particular island. And you can see here is actually Sri Lanka. Now here we're getting back to Africa again. And and you can see there's not a whole lot of earthquakes. And then right here up in Europe. And then getting over there. And then the, I'll just show you the North Pole so you can see that. You might be really interested in seeing how this all works through Iceland up through there and then the upper side. And there is a question of what the true North, North Pole is. You can see there's the Bering Strait coming down through here. Another little strait here pulling through there. And then we're gonna go back down here just to look at Africa again. So you can see that and then I'll bring you over to Antarctica. And you can see that split that we were talking about from the Indian Ocean actually comes down through here hitting this point here and there's actually a weird question because right here is the magnetic pole and you pull back here going up in this weird little circle which is actually very similar to the Caribbean if I were to take this out you can see there's a circle right in here and let me try to straighten that out for you and you can see all these earthquakes here as well as this Atlantic fault line coming down through here and then this little circular area here with this major earthquake zone right there and then Antarctica kind of looking like a brain unbelievably and then I really want you to see this carefully how we're actually kind of chasing Australia with Antarctica and this little guy right here pointing to the magnetic pole and then you can see how this boot and now you can see this guy here so hopefully this gives you a full perspective i'm going to try to still even go through this one more time just to make sure that you get to see everything so you don't have to even do this ever so this whole boot heading out to there and then a very particular point you can see this point here pointing right here to Papua New Guinea and this whole island actually being the same shape as the other guy on the entire opposite side of the earth right here which is guess what Haiti that same shape and if I turn it off you can see this and you can see that big deep cavern here with Jamaica right here and actually a whole lot of farmland right here in Cuba which is a very interesting concept so shifting all of this farmland out of there and bringing it over to Cuba rather than farming out everything here so working together is probably the right way look at the size of these earthquakes right in the jungle huge earthquakes extremely deep too into the ground and you can see some of the biggest radio telescopes and projects are down here in Chile which is an interesting place to check out if you haven't if you looked at the European Southern Observatory ESO you may want to check that out so and then here's the tip of South America again so I'll try to zoom out it's sorry it's gonna probably mess up the the earthquake map here um, but uh, Jeez, oh, sorry about this. Anyway, so again, our conversation was supposed to be about the wildlife. So again, here's the deal, right? Uh, you want to talk about really cool stuff, talk about the wildlife, right? Um, again, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things to talk about. Let's get into solving all the problems, your problems especially. 
and uh, all the details and see what we can do. And especially let's talk about the good things. So, uh, because we want to make life really great. So, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. I'm really sorry if it's been a very long discussion, way longer than I anticipated here on this other stuff. But uh, let me turn this off for a second and show you one last image. I'm really sorry about this because I don't want to... I know there's some people that really need the help in terms of seeing everything, so I wanted to show all the details on the climate map. So here's the climate map for the entire planet. And this one works a little bit better because it's not doesn't involve so much data points, but you can kind of see how important that whole piece that we discussed is. And also relative size, like look at the importance here. It's a ginormous piece that we really need to watch, but it doesn't mean this pink area, it actually means that there's bigger animals like elephants, tigers, giraffes, rhinos, even gorillas or chimpanzees that live right up here. They're all awesome creatures and actually a lot of people say that this jungle is more diverse because of the larger animals. And now you can see that this whole region how that matters and you can see that actually we're not even talking about the below water there's a lot of coral reefs that's a conversation we've entirely avoided and now you can see hawaii and now you get to see how important this whole piece is in terms of biodiversity which we really have not discussed so basically this whole triangle again becoming extremely important and actually this because you have multiple habitats because it's just one color here that's only one type of plant or one type of animal that can live in that range but there's different animals as you get up into the mountains so all of this becomes important and you can see the coast of india here as well and i'll just keep going all around so you can see and i'll look at the north pole and the south pole really quick so you can see that you can see it's very cold we're talking extremely freezing cold uh, on the North Pole and South Pole. It's really ridiculous. And I'll spin all the way around on the South Pole so you can see everything here. Now you can see this little piece here and the boot here and then as well as this thing. And you can kind of see, kind of almost coming out here, kicking off into space, kind of pulling in through here, coming around like that. And actually how this whole piece there's penguins one of the funny things is that there's actually penguins over here in australia somehow got over there um as well as living out into here so how weird is it to have a bird that cannot fly crazy but uh you can see here antarctica essentially looking like the shape of a brain and i got to say something good about me hey man i'm the guy that really started talking about this looking like a brain and started hopefully a very valuable spiritual discussion about how our entire planet works spiritually so let's have a discussion about it now look at how it's opposite you can see this kind of shape here being opposite and yet looking the same way and almost slingshotting something out into the ocean from here which is basically Hawaii. Now, the weird thing about Hawaii is this thing kind of pulls up into the here, the North Pole. And I'm sorry to bring these conversations in, but we've had a discussion about doing some spiritual ideas about hauling asteroids to the North Pole. Uh, but look at that kind of question here so you can see that from that perspective. Um, and there's so many ways to look at it. You can also look at it from the African side and you can see Africa kind of pointing through here down through this as well so uh, and again we're talking about the wildlife here so it's not just the north pole and the south pole but the equator so let's bring it back to the equator uh, and i think i showed another one showing the photoplankton and that's a really awesome one you may want to look at that uh video really carefully to see how because we're really needing a discussion and actually this is one of what we're calling the satanic poles on the other side, we'd have this pole here. 
uh, right here. So there's a whole lot of fish and wildlife here, and we can actually start working on that problem in the Bahamas. And in one day, less than 24 hours, you can sail between here. My uncle has lived in the Caribbean pretty much his whole life on a sailboat and sailed all the way up to Cape Cod and then actually all the way up to San Francisco and Seattle, um, but sailed through the Panama Canal many times. So really cool guy. But uh, anyway, there's a whole lot that you can do for free on a sailboat. You don't have to use any energy whatsoever. You can use wind power. So uh, anyway, there's a lot of things here going on. So I hope that's given you a pretty good perspective of the climate of Earth. So again, we've looked at the jungles here. You can compare them really quick and hopefully that has helped you out. And I'll just close it with a picture of the North Pole because, oh, look at that. You can see the whole galaxy right there behind it. But take a look at that North Pole carefully. We're going to try to have some other interesting discussions about the North Pole at some point um, and look at some spiritual questions that we've been looking at um, as well. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful. I'm really sorry about the length of this video. It's been, my God, one hour. Jeez, terrible. Um, but... Uh, the discussion, you know, there's just so much to talk about. So uh, definitely rethink about the way that we look at the universe and relook at the Earth. And what I would emphasize is the importance of everything. So um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'll see you later. Thanks. Uh, I hope you've had a good night. And uh, I think it's like Friday night or something like this. So go out and do some fun things. And I'll see you later. Thank you so much. So I really love this image kind of showing these three little pieces right here of the puzzle. This guy, this guy, and this guy. And looking at how that's all kind of related. And let's even flip this completely upside down. To see what that looks like for a second with Antarctica on the top. So, wow, look at Madagascar shows up on that picture here. So, uh, so kind of another perspective. Um, but yeah, so uh, take a look at everything and let me know what you think. Uh, it's really nice to look at the world upside down for a moment here and really think about the way that we think about everything. So, um, and uh, yeah, I hope you really enjoy the discussion. Let me know what ideas you got, um, especially the spiritual ideas. Um, I'd be definitely interested in hearing from you about what's going on, on in the universe and on our planet. Thank you so much. See you later. Thank you.